The Miami Dolphins and Denver Broncos face off on Sunday in a Week 11 NFL game as Miami one of the hottest teams in the NFL. Denver is not, who will take Miami high? The injury situation and the playing list for next Sunday, all will be updated now. Brian Flores and Vic Fangio were hired in 2019 to their first head coaching jobs. Since then, both the Miami Dolphins and Denver Broncos have used draft picks in the top 40 on a quarterback and taken aggressive approaches to building the roster to their respective visions. Flores and the Dolphins are 3-0 in games started by their young quarterback, Tua Tungavailoa, and the Broncos are 6-6 with Drew Locke in the lineup. Denver is in search of their first win at home this season, 0-4, while Miami is 3-1 in road games. They've done a good job working with the strengths of each different quarterback, so it's going to be a tough test either way, Flores said. And they've got a lot of really good young skill players, Jerry, Judy, KJ, Hamiller, Noah Fant, good backs. I think this will be a tough test for us. One of Miami's many keys to victory has been through strong special teams play. With another solid showing Sunday against the Chargers, the Dolphins jumped to the number one spot in Football Outsiders special teams rankings. Dolphins special teams coordinator Danny Crossman discussed the benefit of having a head coach with a background in the game's third phase. It's an easier conversation because he understands a lot of the concepts, techniques, both in terms of what we're looking for and how it's going to affect or what impact it could have on the opposition, because he understands both sides of it, Crossman said. So obviously having that background is big for me and big for us in terms of our communication. Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tungavailoa foot was included in the team's injury report, but as a full participant. Linebacker Kyle Van Noy hip did not practice. The team announced it promoted wide receiver Antonio Callaway to the active roster and elevated defensive tackle Benito Jones as a COVID-19 replacement for Sunday's game. It's been pretty smooth sailing for Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins since he took over as the starter in Week 8. Miami is riding a five-game winning streak, and Tua has been solid without having to air it out. But it looks like Tua may have just hit his first bump in the road since making his NFL debut. According to Joe Shad of the Palm Beach Post, Tua is currently dealing with a foot injury. However, it did not stop him from being a full participant in practice today. Injuries have been the story of Tua's football career, unfortunately. He dealt with a number of injuries during his three years at Alabama, all of which hindered him from truly standing out as one of college football's all-time greats. In 2019, Tua a Heisman Trophy candidate at Alabama as he completed 71.4% of his passes for 2,840 yards and 33 touchdowns with three picks in only nine games. But a serious hip injury ended his Heisman dreams, his season and almost his playing career. But Tua worked hard to make a full recovery and when the doctors cleared him to play, the Dolphins jumped at the chance to draft him number 5 overall in the 2020 NFL Draft. Tua made his debut late in a win over the New York Jets, and was named the starter a few days later. Since then, completed 63.6% .6 of his passes for 519 yards and 5 touchdowns with no picks. While he may not be a proper candidate for Rookie of the Year due to his late start, he's on the track for success so long as he can stay healthy. Van Noy, whom the Dolphins activated off the COVID-19 list Saturday, didn't make it out of the first half. He was injured on a three-yard run by Kalen Ballage with 8.38 remaining in the first half. He briefly stayed down before limping off. Van Noy eventually walks slowly to the locker room with athletic trainers. Van Noy has two tackles. Van Noy did not miss a game on the COVID-19 reserve list, but he did miss practice time. He has appeared in eight games this season, making 35 tackles, two sacks, two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries and four pass breakups. The Chargers scored seven plays after Van Noy left, with Justin Herbert getting the ball across the goal line on fourth and goal from the one. It cut the Dolphins' lead to 14-7. Update 5.16 p.m. Van Noy returned to the sideline with two minutes left in the first half and began stretching. He has a hip injury and is questionable to return. There was a lot of anticipation surrounding what wide receiver Antonio Callaway could bring to the Miami Dolphins offense, but that time has not arrived yet. 
and that's even after Callaway was elevated from the practice squad for the game against the Los Angeles Chargers at Hard Rock Stadium on Sunday. As it turned out, Callaway did not play one snap against the Chargers despite being active. He was the only player not to play along with backup quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick. Instead, the wide receiver snaps in the 29-21 victory against the Chargers were split among Devontae Parker, 59, Jakeem Grant, 44, and Mac Hollins, 11, with rookie 7th round pick Malcolm Perry getting 23 snaps but with a couple as the Wildcat quarterback. Callaway has a lot of natural ability, but he's had off-the-field issues dating back to his time at the University of Florida. He's been practicing with the Dolphins for the past two weeks after his NFL suspension for violating the league's substance abuse policy was lifted. Callaway's last football action since he was released by the Cleveland Browns last November came in the short-lived XFL, but he was placed on injured reserve with a lower leg injury two weeks after signing with the Tampa Bay Vipers. He was up for the game, so we were ready to put him in, head coach Brian Flores said. How the game went, he ended up not playing. So the thinking is he's a good young player. He's getting better on a weekly basis. Hopefully he can improve in practice, in meetings, get a better feel for what we're doing, offensively and in the kicking game and give himself an opportunity to play. Wide receivers coach Josh Grizzard declined Tuesday to address where Callaway is from a health standpoint, but did talk about his progress. He's done a good job coming in here and learning the playbook and trying to get on the same page, Grizzard said, and I can see the progression with him from day to day and he's trending in the right direction. Jones could play in next Sunday's game against the Broncos. He has played in three games for the Dolphins in 2020, recording one solo tackle. He spent the rest of the season on Miami's practice squad. He originally entered the NFL as an undrafted college free agent with the Dolphins on April 29, 2020. Jones was a four-year letterman 2016 and three-year starter at Mississippi. He earned second-team All-SEC honors as a senior in 2019. The Dolphins are likely to dodge inclement weather on this mid-November trip to the Rocky Mountains, but as the weather cools down, running the ball becomes increasingly important. Offensive line coach Steve Marshall likes the direction the Miami run game is trending. It's been a big emphasis, he said. I think we're trending in the right direction, kind of where we're going and what we want to do. We hear coach Chan Gailey talk about it all the time. We have balance in our offensive attack, whether it's run or throw it. The Denver defensive line has filtered through a lot of players throughout the season. No Broncos defensive tackle has exceeded 37.0% of the defensive snaps. Forcing Denver to dip deep into that rotation would only benefit Miami. A successful running game creates more opportunities in the passing game, a perfect segue into our second key matchup.